The concept of a Bernoulli trial, like flipping coins. You have some basic experiment that has, we'll start with two outcomes. You can do it with more outcomes. Probability of success is some value p, and the probability of failure is 1 minus p, and people often denote that with a symbol q. But then the experiment is repeated over and over again, a total of n times. But it's very important that the one trial doesn't affect the outcome of other trials. And let, me, let me give you an example. If you flip a coin and you say success is ahead, and failure is tails, that's a Bernoulli trial. The result of flipping one coin doesn't affect in any way subsequent flips. Suppose you draw a card out of a deck of cards and say success is it's a red card, hearts or diamonds, and failure is it's a black card, clubs or spades. Is that a Bernoulli trial? Not unless you put the card back in and reshuffle the deck. If you pull out the card and look at it and say it's red or black, success or failure, now put the card back in and shuffle it thoroughly, and now do it again, and you keep doing that, then that's a Bernoulli trial. But if you pull the card out and say red or black, pull out another card, red or black, that's not a Bernoulli trial because results, early results influence later results. In particular, eventually you'll run out of cards. But a whole bunch of reds begin to bias it in favor of blacks and vice versa. So Bernoulli trials, you're going to repeat an experiment. You're either going to get success or failure, but very important that the trials are independent. A fair coin is tossed. A pair of dice are rolled, and oh, and here's a, this is actually a pretty good example. A pair of dice is rolled, and it's success if you get an even total. Are you more likely to have a success or a failure? What do you think? Yeah, even odd, the same, isn't it? Are you sure? Why don't we pause right here, and you tell me, are you more likely to get even total or an odd total in a roll of a pair of dice? And remember, your two extremes, 2 and 12, they're both even, but they're also the least likely. You think it's more likely to be odd? How are you think so, or you, did you calculate it? So calculate it. Calculate it. More likely to be even or odd? The even totals are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. The probability of a 2 is 1 over 36. The probability of 4 
Is 3 over 36? Because you can get 3, 1, 2, 2, and 1, 3. The probability of a 6 is 5 over 36 because you can do 5, 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, and 1, 5. So, and probably 8 is the same as a 6. Yes, no? <laughs> It's a good question. Let me try to answer it this way. Paint the die. Have a red one and a blue one. Roll them. Now, just look at the two dice. Either the red one is a three and the blue one is a one, or the red one is a two and the blue one is a two, or the red one is a one and the blue one is a three. There's no two and two and two and two because I can tell the difference between the red one and the blue one. You believe me? Sure. Okay. What do those numbers add up to? Point made wasn't obvious. Okay, Bernoulli trials. And now I, I give another example. Two cards are drawn from a deck. Success is that they come from the same suit. Now success is, is now much less than a half. But again, I comment, in order for this to be a Bernoulli trial, before you repeat the experiment, you have to put the two cards back in and then uh, reshuffle the deck. OK. Now, here is an important formula that says if we have Bernoulli trials and we make a total of n trials with the probability of success being p, then the formula for the, the probability that exactly m of the trials are successes is the binomial coefficient c n choose m times p to the m times 1 minus p to the n minus m. So uh, we go back to the example on the previous slide. A fair die is rolled 10 times. The probability of getting a three exactly twice is C ten two out of the ten trials have two of them be three. The probability of getting the three is one out of six, so one out of six squared. The probability of not getting a three is five out of six. 5 out of 6 to the 8th. I actually calculated that, and it's 1,953,125 over 6,718,464, and that's about 0.29071. Once again, my comment about big arithmetic is very applicable here because I'm working with 10 flips, 10 rolls. If I did this problem with 100 rolls, the numbers are going to be huge. OK, trust me that my arithmetic is correct. Or at least Maple tells me. OK, another example. If you flip a fair coin 10 times, the probability that you get exactly five heads is C, 10, choose 5 over 2 to the 10th. Now, notice that in that formula at the top of the slide, if p equals 1 minus p is a half, then it's 1 half to the n times 1 half, 1 half to the m times 1 half to the n minus m, and that's just 1 half to the n. So the formula is even simpler when p is 1 half. 
So if you want to get exactly five heads in a roll and ten tosses, the probability is C10, 5, which is 252, over 2 to the 10, which is 1,024. And as a decimal, that's about 0.24609. I wouldn't want to calculate any of these completely by hand because the arithmetic can get quite large.